Hello, everybody. I'm a researcher at the University of Melbourne, working in collaboration with museums uh, here, local museums, to advance their use of innovative technologies. Unfortunately, I couldn't join you today uh, because of some unexpected uh, circumstances, but I'm happy to share with you my project virtually, and I hope that uh, this presentation will be engaging, useful, and it will lead to some interesting discussions in the end. Today, I would like uh, to present my project, which is uh, uh, developing a dynamic online application, Museum Soft Power Map. The agenda for today is as follows. First, I will present the conceptual framework of this project. Second, I will share details about the current pilot project that I'm working on in collaboration with their local museum, the Australian Center for the Moving Image. And finally, I will demonstrate their demo version of the soft power method system that has been developed. Soft power is the term first coined by American professor of international relations, Joseph Nye, to describe an ability of the country to influence behavior of others through persuasion and attraction. Nye argues that this new type of power offers an alternative solution to address the complexity of international relations by employing culture as the foundation for international influence upon other societies. A country on the international stage can achieve influence by building networks, communicating compelling narratives, establishing international roles, and drawing on the resources that make this country naturally attractive to the world. In the last decades, the concept of soft power has gained a strong international popularity among politicians, academics, and practitioners uh, in the field of international relations. More importantly, soft power as a concept started to be employed not only in relation to countries as the main actors on the world stage, but also uh, to non-state actors and, of course, museums. <clears throat> a huge inspiration in my project is the book by Lord and Blackenberg, Museum Cities and Soft Power, published in 2015 by the American Alliance of Museums. And the book illustrates that in the 21st century, museums are experiencing a new transformation, turning them from sites of branded experiences to the places of soft power. Produced by museum professionals and cultural consultants rather than academics, the book draws on a number of case studies from around the world, which indicate that now museums really play a leading role in growing competition among cities for talent, tourism, and investment. Museums acquire soft power by enhancing the importance of cities and empowering their residents uh, and visitors. They become centers for social activism, innovation, and technology development. They attract visitors and generate economic impact. They facilitate international connections and host important global events. A nation's soft power is increasingly subject to measurement with, for example, Portland Soft Power 40, or a global power city index reports providing a, an evidence of this trend. These initiatives have generated a series of global indicators based on culture, education, science, politics, uh, and of course economy to annually assess the extent to which nations have risen to or declined upon these indexes. Challenging these attempts to measure soft power my research reconfigures the framework of soft power evaluations by stressing three important points that have been overlooked in previous research. First, I argue that measuring soft power of a whole country is misleading since these evaluations, they don't take into consideration their complex nature of different and very often competing actors within the country who generate and exert different degrees of soft power upon global publics. Instead, I focus on museums as important actors in the international arena, which has for their distinctive identities, brands, audiences, and of course, followers. Second, I employ a specially oriented software represented by geographic information system to map and visualize soft power uh, geographical spread and reach are an important variable that is usually missing in existing evaluation dashboard systems. Specifically, my research demonstrates that it is not productive to measure soft power in general terms, assuming that the power appeal of a particular country or an actor is the same in different geographical locations around the globe. 
Instead, I employ cultural analytics and city statistics of specific locations, uh, of specific cities, are two or and these statistics can include cultural diversity and vibrancy, local language and religion to evaluate uh, the soft power appeal to people living in this specific area, considering it is a politically, culturally, and economically defined locale. Finally, my research emphasizes the need to focus on evaluations of soft power capacities or resources rather than impacts. It is important to note that uh, Knight himself indicated that soft power is generated through activation of key resources. French sociologist and philosopher Pierre Bourdon also stressed that power usually takes the form of resources, which he called capitals, uh, that can be created, accumulated, exchanged, and finally consumed. He identified various types of capital, including our cultural capital, social capital, and economic capital, which are evenly distributed among social classes. Most importantly, from this theory, capitals as forms of power exist not in isolation, but are relational to each other and transferable. They operate in fields or structured spaces of struggle over specific types of capitals and can manifest, can be manifested through a symbolic power. The most powerful force, which are, we can also define as soft power. So, according to Bardot, all types of capital can function as a symbolic capital when it obtains explicit or practical recognition or legitimacy. <clears throat> so, in my work, I take uh, the correlation between the nice soft power and the Bardot symbolic capital are as a main source of inspiration to propose a comprehensive framework that can clearly articulate are the sources of the soft power are in relation to museums. The geographic information system software that I'm developing right now operates as a combination of deep mapping layers, each representing a different dimension of museum capitals tied to a specific location on the globe. The resources of cultural layer exposes the global diversity and scope of museum collections, highlighting the geographic areas of their origins and uh, calculating the collections power appeal index in relation to different countries. Our, the outputs of social layer may maps complex museum ecosystems by visualizing museum social resources and telling stories about their engagements with the constituencies, partners, and audiences on the local and global level. The impacts or economic layer builds on the metric of economic effects measured through ticket sales and home at home and abroad, uh, local international program service revenue, and income received through peripheral services demonstrating the local power of attraction measured through economic gains. In my project, I argue that mapping different types of resources and capitals can visualize museum symbolic capital or soft power. The main goal of this dynamic mapping system that I'm developing is to map various types of museum capitals, to explore correlations between them, and to identify factors which play an important role in time space development of museum soft power. However, as you can imagine, this is quite a big and ambitious project. To start with more feasible goals, I have developed a pilot uh, in collaboration with the Australian Center for the Moving Image, uh, or ACNE. ACNE has its roots in the State Film Center, was established in 1946 uh, to maintain a film collection for public use. ACNE opened the uh, R in 2010, and it really became an iconic Melbourne landmark. To date, houses the nation's largest collection of moving image documents are including videos, films, rope content, gaming, and other hybrid forms of digital media. Uh, a young, dynamic, and ambitious institution, ECME, in 15 years of its existence, managed to develop a large audience, reaching in last year more than 1.5 million visitors to the Federation Square where it is located, and more than half a million, half a million uh, attendants of its international exhibitions in six different countries around the world. With 22% international visitors, it generates more than $11.5 million uh, through ticket sales and program service revenue 
uh, on an annual basis. As a partner in the project, ACME is providing access to its historical institutional records and digital expertise to develop their geographic information system, which will trace and measure the development of the ACME soft power in time and space. The pilot project aims to employ museum records in the last 15 years in collection acquisition and strategic programming to map and visualize a growing geographic diversity of the museum cultural resources and activities to explore how this international exposure affects audiences are, and uh, affects uh, the development of a brand recognition of this institution around the world. The first stage in the pilot project that has been completed is uh, mapping ACME collections and calculating collection appeal power index uh, uh, to different countries. First, it is important to say that ACME has unbelievably rich and diverse collections. It has more than 200,000 original items and more than 40,000 titles. And the majority of the collections are, uh, is available online and it has been cataloged. Uh, the collection also is quite diverse because 70% of uh, films are produced outside Australia and not only in the United States or the United Kingdom, for example, but also in France, in Germany, in Japan, in China or in New Zealand. Furthermore, the ACME collections are quite ling linguistically diverse. There are movies in around 49 different languages, which are spoken in more than 230 countries around the world. For example, extensive collections in English, which originate from Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the United States, and the UK, and other countries, provide a potential content access to people from a hundred countries, uh, while, for example, films in French could potentially reach people in 48 countries around the world. And films in Arabic uh, could target populations of 27 countries. Such a linguistically diverse uh, content provides an opportunity for a much larger scope of potential audiences to understand the potential appeal power of the ACME collections to people from different countries. I consider two main types of criteria. First is the collections criteria, and in this case, I explored how many collections items were produced in a certain country, and then I calculated how many films in uh, the ACME collections are actually in the language or languages spoken in this country. On the other hand, I looked also at social economic criteria to bring to light some nuances. For example, I explored immigration statistics in Melbourne to find out how many tourists come to this city from a specific country on an annual basis and how many people, for example, live right now in Melbourne as immigrants from this specific country. And finally, I considered internet penetration rate, which affects the collection access and discoverability online. Finally, I calculated the collection appeal power index as a weight sum of uh, subsidized sub indexes across uh, two different criteria that I have just discussed. This is a video capture of the demo version of the method system, which is available online. It shows the ethnic collection appeal power index in different countries, which ranges from zero to one. And there uh, is visualized on the map by the intensity of the blue color applied to different countries. And you click uh, a country, uh, the app indicates uh, how many movies were produced in these specific countries and also how many films in the ACME collections are in the spoken language or languages are uh, you know, of this country. It also considers uh, different secondary factors that we are talked about uh, earlier, such as internet penetration rate, ancestry, immigration, and tourism. So if you, for example, go to the UK, we can see that uh, the ACME collection appeal power index uh, in this country is pretty high, uh, which uh, almost reaches 0.9. And this is not a surprise because the majority of the ACME collections are produced are in, Eng in, in English language. As you can see here, there is a great number of uh, movies in English. And also our internet penetration rate uh, in the UK is pretty high. Um, also, if you consider uh, social demographics, uh, 
the British uh, ancestry are, is uh, very common among the Melbourne population, and there are still a lot of immigrants from, who come from the UK to live in Melbourne. And of course, there are there are a lot of tourism who come from the UK to visit Melbourne every year. And even though this tourism rate here seems pretty small, but in comparison to other countries, believe me, it's very high because there are uh, many countries on the map where are, uh, there are no people, there are zero are people who actually come to visit Melbourne, for example, Egypt, we can see zero, or some other countries in Africa, or look how many people from Russia, not so many. Uh, so this is the statistics for 2016, which shows that, for example, in 2016, there were uh, almost zero tourists uh, coming from Russia to the UK. And these factors actually play a really important role in calculating this poly appeal index of the collections uh, to people living in different countries around the world because they show the potential are um, a chance of collection discoverability and access to the population living in this country. Even though the first stage of the pilot is completed, is right for the challenges that are needed to be addressed. <laughs> Uh, and first of all, uncatalogued or poorly annotated items in the collections complicates the mapping process. Second, in order to tell meaningful stories about the collections, one has to conduct an archival research of the institutional records, which dates back to 1946. Finally, in the last 50 years, ACME has produced around 400 movies about immigrant communities, in Melbourne, which add more complexity to map, uh, to map the collection diversity. The mapping exercise of the collection revealed that there are gaps in the institutional records and the collection soft power is not really activated yet. So the next stage in the project is to map global social ecosystem of ACME by looking at its international engagements with other museums, audiences, and cultural institutions around the world. For example, in 2015, or starting in 2015, ACME started to implement a series of blockbuster exhibits in different countries in collaboration with the DreamWorks Animation, the very famous Hollywood company. The exhibition features over 400 items, including rare and never seen before drawings, models, original artworks, or interviews, and interactive displays from the DreamWorks. And it has been touring different venues around the globe, which include first, Art Science Museum in Singapore, the Papa Museum in New Zealand, Seoul Museum of Art in South Korea, National Taiwan Science and Education Center in Taipei, uh, Museum of Contemporary Art in Monterey in Mexico, and Canadian Museum of History in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, in each specific location, the exhibit attracted different amount of audiences and generated different economic revenue. Using cultural analytics, it is interesting to explore what factors influence the generation of soft power in different places. Factors for consideration include those that define the enabling environment, or, and these are the city population and diversity, including immigrants, city international tourism, cultural vibrancy, cultural infrastructure and competition, cultural participation, and that cultural consumption. Also, it is important to take into account host museum factors, which include local museum audiences and diversity, museum ranking among tourists, architecture and facilities, for example, historical sites of significance of famous design buildings, like the Guggenheim Bilbao, for example, which plays an important role in generating this extra power of attraction of audiences and tourists. And of course, the brand and the popularity of the partners involved uh, in the project uh, plays a huge role. Uh, so, for example, the global reputation and visibility of the DreamWorks make this exhibition even more appealing uh, uh, among audiences around the world, which uh, were already exposed to a lot of uh, very famous movies uh, of this company before the exhibition came to visit their city. Also, cultural assets uh, play a huge role, and in these uh, big blockbusters, they become really activated and they become really good sources of soft power.
Uh, right now, I'm in the process to map the blockbuster local impacts in different countries and will be happy to share results once available. As you can see, I'm in the middle of my pilot project development and there is a long way for me uh, to complete it. However, I envision this pilot as a robust platform for developing a more universal museum application, not only, for example, for the ACME Museum here in Australia, but that can be actually used by any museum around the world to visualize and explore the soft power potential. It is a pleasure to present this project to you today, and I'm looking forward to receiving your questions and comments, positive or negative, uh, via email. I will be happy to continue a conversation with those who are interested in the project. And uh, thank you so much for your attention and enjoy the rest of your conference.